Why me? Of all people in the world, why did it have to happen to me? I lost my work. I lost my relationship. I lost my money, lost my house, lost a whole number of things. Why do bad things happen to good people? I'd love to tell you that it's magic, but it's not. I'd love to tell you that it's easy, but it ain't. I'd love to tell you that everybody likes it, but they don't. I'd love to tell you that you can just anoint yourself with oil and it'll happen, but it's not true. It is a struggle. It's a struggle every day. My life was shaped in part through tragedies. And the weird thing about tragedies is that they don't tell you that they're shaping you. <laughs> it doesn't feel like they're shaping you, but they are in fact shaping you. None of us ever get through this life without heartache, without turmoil. And if you believe and you have faith and you can get knocked down and get back up again and you believe in perseverance as a great human quality, you find your way. The tragedies don't start when you need the power from them. They start early accrue interest over time and in retrospect when you look back over your life you understand something that you didn't understand in real time speed all life demands struggle all life demands struggle a lot of people don't know that they think that life comes with privileges not problems promises not pain but the Pope says all life demands struggle. Those who have everything given to them become lazy, selfish, and insensitive to the real values of life. The very striving and hard work that we so constantly try to avoid is the major building block in the person we are today. I believe that the struggle is a part of the process. People who get things without struggle don't appreciate them. It, it, it is the diligence and the fight to be relevant that, that creates the backdrop that when you get there, you appreciate what God has done. Light loses its relevance without darkness. Pain and, and, and struggling are a part of the process. The promise is not powerful if it is not painted on the backdrop of a problem. Every struggle is making you stronger. Every difficulty is growing you up. Every painful time, even though you don't like it, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. Don't complain about the pain Without the pain, we couldn't reach the fullness of our destinies. The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Heartache, loss, disappointments, they don't leave us the same. When I lost my father, I didn't come out like I was before. I was changed. If you go through a divorce, a legal battle, a friend betrays you, eventually that will pass. You'll get through it but you will be different. Now, how the pain changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter or you can come out better. You can come out with a chip on your shoulder blaming God or you can come out stronger with a greater confidence in God. You can come out defeated, giving up on your dreams or you can come out with a new passion, a new fire, excited about the new opportunities in front of you. All of us experience pain my challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character,
to gain new confidence. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. That pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you, to increase you, to develop you. So I want you to understand this morning, number one, that it is, it is always a struggle. And without a struggle, there can be no victory. Without a struggle, there can be no victory. Without a struggle, there is no sense of appreciation. I can tell just as good when you have fought to get where you are. Because when you have fought to get where you are, you don't let anybody take away. When you have earned and paid your dues and suffered and cried and labored and made mistakes and had to get back up again and brush the dirt off your knees and you finally get something when that devil comes in to kill, steal and destroy you say, wait a minute you're messing with the wrong person this time I struggled too hard I struggled too long I struggled too many years to let you walk in and take away what God has given me. See, rich people give their kids everything except what made them rich. It is the struggle that gave you the tenacity to fight the fight to get up on your feet. Hard-working people often work hard to give their children everything that they didn't have and what you are giving them is crippling them from being like you. Because what made you a hard worker is hard times. When you move away the hard times, they become presumptuous, mediocre. They start complaining and whining about nothing making up things to be upset about that you didn't have time to notice in your house because you had to fight for something to eat you had to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you didn't have time to have your feelings hurt i believe that you cannot be relevant if you have not been through something i'm going to say that again i believe that you can't be relevant if you haven't been through something I don't think you got the, the, the fortitude to stand until you've messed up and made mistakes and had setbacks and blew it. I don't even think you appreciate opportunities until you've blown a few of them and you say to yourself, this time, I'm going all the way. Let me ask you something. If someone prays for patience, you think God gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If they prayed for courage, does God give them courage? Or does he give them opportunities to be courageous? If someone prayed for the family to be closer, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does he give them opportunities to love each other? become your reality. You are where you are today in part because of what you've been saying about yourself. Words are like seeds. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. And this is great when we're saying things like, I'm blessed, I'm strong, I will accomplish my dreams. I'm coming out of debt. That's not just being positive. You are prophesying victory, prophesying success, prophesying new levels. Your life will move in the direction of your words. But too many people go around prophesying just the opposite. I never get any good breaks. I'll never get back in shape. Business is slow. I'll probably get laid off. Flu season is here. I always get it. They don't realize they are prophesying defeat. 
It's just like they're calling in bad breaks, mediocrity, lack. You can't talk defeat and expect to have victory. You can't talk lack, not enough, can't afford it, never get ahead, and expect to have abundance. If you have a poor mouth, you're going to have a poor life. If you don't like what you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. You can't do this. It's impossible. It's never going to happen. Just give up. Just settle. It's not meant. Accept the fear. You're not the one. They're just better. You're too weak. No one wants to hear you. Try something else. No one likes you. Just follow. Do like everybody else. Do it the easy way. Accept being broke. Quit dreaming. What are you doing? Why do you have to be so damn different? We all have this negative self-talk that goes in our head. Guess what? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We saw it there with the, um, with the video Sheldon, Dr. Levy showed, right? We know that our thoughts influence actions. Why do we want to say that negative self-talk to ourselves? We need to get our own self-affirmations. Muhammad Ali, what was his self-affirmation? I am the greatest. Who else is gonna tell you? There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. That is my affirmation. It, if I don't believe it, no one else will. How do you build self-confidence? Get away from the people who will tear you down. There's enough of that. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. There is no one better than me. It's a difference between hubris and ego and false pride. It's just reminding yourself in quiet, silent moments. I put it down on a list. It's right beside my mirror, right? About all the things that make me who I am. Because I make enough mistakes and the newspapers will recognize it and people around me will recognize it and they'll tear me down. And pretty soon I'll begin to believe it. Stop the self-talk the negative self-talk. If you'll watch, you'll see some athletes, they'll have a little bandage or a little um, brand around them. Uh, Lance Armstrong's a perfect one. What's his self-affirmation? Live strong isn't a brand. It was to remind him of who he was. Live strong. Then it came a brand. He would move that from one arm to the next arm when doubt and fear came into his mind. Live strong. Put it on there. Let's go. We'll all have it. Replace it. I believe passionately that we can shift the negative voices and stories that are going on in our minds into positive ones. How do you do that? Well, there's three main questions. The first question is, is it the truth? Is whatever I'm sharing with someone or what you're hearing from someone else that's giving you feedback about your life true? You know 100% that it's true. First question. Second question. Is it necessary? Is what I'm saying to myself in my head, is it necessary in the exact moment in what I'm doing with my life right then? And the third question is, does it improve upon the silence? Somewhere deep inside, you know what kind of person you were designed to be. If you want to produce great acorns, think like an oak, not like an acorn. Think like the person you intend to become. Like the Christian question, what would Jesus do? Ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? So let me ask a question. What kind of seed is in you? Figure out who you are, don't apologize for who you are, and then become even greater than you naturally are at what you are. If I could give you one thing to take from this, it is no one will believe in you unless you do. Listen to the words of that video. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes. We're supposed to be different, folks. And when people look at us, 
believe in yourself. No idea will work unless you are committed to doing the work. I'm gonna repeat that brain tattoo because it's so important. Most people come to a Facebook Live or they read a book or they listen to an audio book or they invest in an online course, but they don't get traction because they don't stay with what they wanna change long enough. 66 days until automaticity. 66 days to run the protocol, 66 days of going the extra mile for your customers until it becomes a new way of being, 66 days of developing your mindset and your heart set until it becomes the new you. And then of course you have to go deeper into the neuro pathway, right? And so the key is really this, most people want to make a change, but they don't stay with the change long enough until the change becomes automatic. All change is hard at first, and it's messy in the middle, and it's beautiful at the end. All change is hard at first, and it's messy in the middle, and it's beautiful at the end. And so if it wasn't hard at first, it wouldn't be real change, okay? And so the ideas I want to offer to you, number one, APR absolute personal responsibility, APR, absolute personal responsibility. You see, if you practice blaming long enough, you are going to be Federer or Messi or Michelangelo level on blaming. I'm gonna repeat that again. APR, your life changes when you take absolute personal responsibility of the way your life looks. And if you blame it on your parents, if you blame it on your boss, if you blame it on your community, if you blame it on the economy, the more you do that, you will be practicing being spectacular at blaming. Your life changes when you look in the mirror and say, if I'm not healthy, it's because of me. Your life changes when you say, if I'm not happy in my relationships, it's because I am not selecting the right people or being the right person. Your life transforms when you say, I don't have enough money because I'm not contributing the value and doing the right things and getting really good at what I do, so I make the money. Because income reflects the value that you give to the marketplace. APR, it's about absolute personal responsibility is also about saying, I'm not having the impact in the world because I'm not doing the things and running the rituals and installing the beliefs required to have an impact on the world. You can achieve the remarkable, the seemingly impossible. You can realize spectacular results. Here's my question. Are you installing the right beliefs? Are you running the right heart sets? Have you practiced the right rituals? Do you have the right people in your life? Do you have the, are you reading the right books? I mean, people say, oh, I wanna be world class, but they're watching TV every night and they're surfing the internet. And every second they have their notifications distracting them so they don't do focused work. They do fake work versus real work. So your life is a reflection of who you are. Your life is a reflection of who you are. And that's why in the title of this, I. I've been teaching this idea or, or offering to my audiences. You know, I used to say I suggest or I invite you and now I'm suggesting to you that you must do these things because I love you, so I'm saying it like that. I, I, I think you must do the right things to think the right thoughts and install the right beliefs. You must remember that it's not only mindset, it's your heart set cleaning out your anger or bitterness or disappointment. You must install the right habits. You must become the kind of person you are built to be. You must become kinder. You must do what it takes, not only when it's easy, but when it's hard. You must exercise APR, absolute personal responsibility. Why? Because potential unexpressed turns to pain. And if you are not doing these things, you will end up heartbroken on the last day of your life. You must become the person you have the potential to be for your family, for your community, for this world. We have never needed heroes as much as we do right now. Why wait for more of them when you have it within you to become one of them? So APR. Secondly, I wanna to offer to you, impossible is just a belief. 
Impossible is just a belief. That's not some platitude, some inspirational speak. If you look at the research and the work of a lot of the preeminent positive psychologists, okay, uh, Martin Seligman, Sonia Lubomirsky, Heidi Grant Halverson. These people will tell you that the narrative or the way you see the world or your internal story reflects your ability to live your potential out in the world. Why? Because if you don't believe, if your story is you can't be world class as an athlete or as an entrepreneur or as a business builder or as a human being, then you're not going to invest in the learning. You're not going to do the work required to live that potential. One American psychologist, his name is James Flynn, and he talks about capitalization IQ. And what he has found is this. It's not the most talented who wins. It's the one who capitalizes on their talents and their gifts to the fullest. And so you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be physically gifted. It's how much of what you were born with you use and bring to life. And so that's really the point about the impossible is really just a belief. And the sad thing is most of us have been taught that our dreams are impossible. Most of us have been thought that a great life is, re life is reserved for the chosen few. And what I'm suggesting to you with great love and respect, I was just outside and is that the impossible is a belief that the world has taught to you and the job of a, of a leader without a title and a job of an A player is really starting to look at your thinking, look at your core beliefs, journal about them, reflect on them, meditate on them so you start to say, oh, these are just the programs that my parents and teachers and society have taught me and this is not who I am. This is not who I am. Okay, so impossible is just a belief. Number three, your success reveals your standards. Your success reveals your standards. What do I mean by that? Well, there are a lot of people who, and there's no judgment here. It's just an idea to play with. There are a lot of people who are mediocre in their work, mediocre in their mindset, average in their heart set. They're struggling. They're not really happy. They're not really having an impact on the world. And they tell you, well, they're really, really content. And I think they're in denial. A lot of those people are in denial. Now you could say to me, Robin, some of those people are just, you know, they don't want to be world class. And that's absolutely fine. But here's the key. What about those people who are actually in denial? And deep inside of them, they're really frightened. And so they say they're happy and they say they're content. And they say, they don't, oh, I don't want very much. But the reality is because they're just frightened people to go out there and bring on their A game. And so what I'm suggesting to you is your success is a reflection of your standards. And as you want to become more and as you want to become a master of your craft and as you want to change the world and as you want to inspire all witnesses who see you and as you want to become the, hero the most heroic version of yourself, you will be in a relentless pursuit of outright greatness. And that's where the people who have become legendary live. A few final ideas is pick your people. Pick your people. You've heard me say this before, but you know, epigenetics is the genetic or the scientific phenomenon that your DNA is determined by your environment. Well, that's a very disruptive and game-changing thought. You, you don't have the life based on your genetics. You have the life based on your environments and your habits. And so, of course, if you don't have the right people in your life, and if you haven't installed the right environments, and if you don't have the right rituals, routines, then you're not going to allow your mind and your heart and your body and your spirit and your creativity and your productivity to be all that it truly can be playing at. And so I just want to remind you to be in the right rooms, be in the right circles, be with people whose lives you want to be living. All it takes is one conversation with someone who is doing what you've always dreamed of doing to show you and remind you that it is possible. And then they'll give you the strategy and then they'll tell you the books that they read and they'll tell you what they do every day. And fundamentally, it's different from most the way most people live. You've heard me share this brain tattoo so many times, which is to have the results only 1% have. You've got to be willing to think the thoughts, 
do the things and live the life that only 1% of the population are willing to do. And if you do that, you're gonna be different and people are gonna call you weird, strange, and crazy. And that's why the people who've changed the world were the misfits, the oddballs, and the eccentrics. In neurobiologically, we are hardwired to fit into the herd. And so now it's the modern world and we're still running this ancient neurobiology of fitting in. But again, if you say you're too busy, if you make excuses, if you say I'm distracted, if you say I'll do it next year, no idea is gonna work if you don't do the work. This is APR, absolute personal responsibility. You know, the victim loves entertainment, the leader loves education. The average performer loves leisure. The A player loves learning. You look at the billionaires, you look at the titans, you look at the people that I work with, you look at the, the best athletes, you look at the best entrepreneurs, you look at the best artists. These people are doing things that are different fundamentally from what society teaches you, you should be doing every day. And then the final thing I'd share with you is this. Punch above your weight class. It's like a boxer, right? Like punch above your weight class. What do I mean? It's this. You want to, let's say you want more prosperity in your life, then go to the places where people who have lots of prosperity are. Just being around them will allow you to change your self-identity step by step. And as you know, your income always reflects your self-identity. If you want to be a better performer at work, you really want to be the heavyweight champion of your field, then go to the conferences, find the masterminds, go to the places where the people who really want to do world-class work are. And just their attitudes and just their emotions will start to infect your mindset, your heart set, your health set, and your soul set. Those are four words I've been teaching recently in my courses. Your mindset, those are your beliefs, your daily thoughts. Those are, of course, gonna affect what you do every day. But a lot of people are teaching mindset. No one's talking about heart set. Your emotional life. If you're angry, if you're bitter, if you're stuck in the past, if you're sad, if you haven't worked through those emotions, then even if you have a great mindset, you're never gonna be the Picasso of what you do because your emotional energy is dragging you down. So work on your heart set along with your mindset. But there's a third piece. It's not only mindset and heart set, it's health set. If you're not physically strong, if you're not doing the workouts, if you're not sweating so you release BDNF, if you're not releasing dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin to create a pharmacy of mastery, you're not going to have the energy and the metabolic game to do world-class work and be a loving, awesome human being for your family and the planet. And then finally, it's not just mindset, it's not just heart set, it's not just health set, it's soul set. Turning down the voice of your ego, it's those old ideas, feed the ego, starve the ego, feed the soul. A bad day for your ego is a great day for your spirit. That's an old idea, it's not my idea. And so work on your spiritual life. A lot of people who teach business philosophies don't talk about their about your spiritual life, but it's not about religion. Your spiritual life to me is finding a mission that you would take a bullet for, doing work that contributes value to humanity, building a great company, building a great life, making your dreams come true, and at the same time, being a philanthropist, making the world better, giving away a lot of what you make, being a, an instrument of service to humanity. To me, that's the real secret of energy. It's the real secret of happiness. It's the real secret of being an awesome human being, giving your life over to a cause or a mighty mission that is so much bigger than your tiny or my tiny self. And if you can get mindset right, and you can get a heart set right, and health set right, and spirit set or soul set right, those four interior devotions will allow you to build exterior empires of vast beauty that all the world will behold. You know, I always say, you show me your crowd, I'll show you your future. If you want to know where you are or what put you on, look in your cell phone. 
because your cell phone will tell me who you talk to. And whoever you spend your time talking to, that's the point you're on. You cannot surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. You can't run around with prejudiced people and not be prejudiced. You can't run around with arrogant people and not be arrogant. You cannot run with packs of angry women and expect to be happy and fulfilled. You cannot hang out with a bunch of defeated, going nowhere, no vision men and be an overcomer. You are who you hang around. Because if I am down and everybody else is down around me, then down becomes normal. But what makes down terrible is when you are down and you can still see up. I'm begging you, man. I'm begging you from a man to a man. Let go. Let go. Let go of these people who you know aren't for you. Here's a big one. If you're not feeling it, find new friends. I'm being dead serious about this. This one is real big for me. Who you hang out with is a huge deal. And again, these are all tried and true things, right? We've heard the, you're the whatever of the five friends you spent. Like, that's real. That's, that one, put in the bank. Like, if you're not feeling it, you need to go to meetup.com and go to 10 meetups of people that are hungry. Like, it's unbelievable what happened to me when I got into the Silicon Valley world and started meeting like Mark Zuckerberg and like Ev Williams and Sock and like Travis. Like, it changed my life. This town, actually it's fun for me to tell this story here. South by Southwest 2007 changed my life because I, hung out, I forced myself to go to a Web 2.0, which later became social media, the current state of the internet conference, South by Southwest, and I was looking at and all these kids, and by the way, this is when tech wasn't cool, straight mm -hmm. fucking nerds, but they were trying to change shit. They weren't here for kicks and giggles. They weren't here to hook up. They were here to like change the world. Like I'm gonna build a product that is gonna be in every single person's hand, like, and they have. Like the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Ubers, they did. And, and, uh, and it, it was the biggest impact of my career and it's something I think a lot about now. So anyway, real practical. If you feel motivated by this conversation or you're intrigued by it, add one new winner friend. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? 100%. Add one new winner friend and cut one loser friend. Like, yeah, I know he's been your boy since fourth grade, but he sits at home and fucking smokes weed and plays 2K all day. <laughs> like, you can only love him so much. If you look around you, take a look at the five people who you spend the most time with. Those people reflect not only who you are, but who you're going to become. So to me, once you've made the decision that you deserve to live a life that reflects every desire that you could ever have, and that you are capable of, of living at your full potential, then the next step is making the choice that you're gonna surround yourself with people who've got the same mindset. Because even if all of y'all have not reached your goals, if you're striving together, that'll hold you accountable to keep moving forward. And they can pull you back on track when you get off track, right? That's really important. I think beyond that, I think that the people around you, being very selective of who you put yourself around is so important because ultimately, the people who you place yourself around are gonna be your support system once you do get to your destination. Here's something real. Go home, cut one, cut your loserous loser friend, <laughs> and go find a winner friend. Go like, go somewhere, go somewhere, like go to, like, go, go to meetup.com, go to a Facebook group, join some shit, DM the 800 people that you think are, make sure they're not bullshitting, uh, they're like doing what you want, and just make one new friend. I see it, like DRock, like he's right, like, it's unbelievable to watch my team, like they get faster, they get smarter, they get more confident, right? It's real, man, it's real confidence and like hunger gets passed on to each other. It's like team dynamics, it's why like a great player that sucks shit can fuck a team up. Like go audit your circle, add one more winner, decrease one more.